What's going on, y'all? So look, the other day, Brian Bomag McIntyre, the trainer for Terrence Bud Crawford, he had an interview with the Boxing Voice, and he came out, and when he was discussing potential fights for Terrence Bud Crawford, he come out and he downplaying Keith Thurman, he downplaying Sean Porter, he downplaying Kell Brook, acting as if they don't need them fights. He's saying Keith Thurman don't even got no belt. Them fights don't really do nothing for, for them, and so on and so forth, right? And let me just say this. If, if Terrence Bud Crawford does not have a Manny Pacquiao fight locked up and he can't get that fight, if, it, if it's not signed, sealed, and delivered, he better take one of them three options. He better. Because at this point in Terrence Crawford's career, he cannot afford to fight another Kavalaskis. He can't afford to fight another Benavidez or Jeff Horn or nothing like that. Bud is an exceptional talent. Everybody knows. Skill for skill, you can argue that Terrence Bud Crawford is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. But at 147, his resume is weak compared to the other guys, right? And so why the hell wouldn't you, why the hell not? Why wouldn't you want to fight a Sean Porter? Sean Porter got the best resume of anybody at 147 outside of Manny Pacquiao, for real. Like, let's be real. Like, why wouldn't you want to fight a Kell Brook? Why wouldn't you want to fight one of them guys, right? It's a win-win for Terrence Bud Crawford if he fights either one of those guys. Any one of those guys, right? Because two of those opponents are guys that uh, Errol Spence Jr. has beaten. And if he's able to beat them more soundly, he can say, hey, well, I beat them guys uh, quicker than what uh, er Errol Spence did. He can compare his fights against those guys, and we can have his, we can have something to compare it to. And it can, it can make things more interesting. Also, if he fights some PBC guys, that gets rid of the whole notion that top rank and PBC cannot do business together. So I don't understand why the hell wouldn't Bo Mack want... Uh, why he trying to downplay them fights and act like, oh, it ain't nothing. I ain't going to, that really ain't no fight I should be taking or that can't do nothing for them. What? Fam, that's not a good look on Bud's part. Now, I know it didn't come straight from Bud's mouth, but everybody knows when a trainer says something, everybody is going to assume it's coming from that fighter. So to act like he don't need Keith Thurman in them, what? What? Come on, fam. You notice that would bolster your resume tremendously. That would do that would do wonders for that, man. I, I, come on, keep uh Kel, not Kel Brook, I'm sorry. Sean Porter is a tough fight for anybody. If you can beat Sean Porter, that's something that's a notch to put in your belt that solidifies you as something legit. So what? Downplaying it, bro? I don't get that. All this whole time, all Terrence Bud Crawford super fans have always been saying that the PBC guys have been ducking that bud smoke. All the PBC guys, they don't want no smoke with Bud. They ducking Bud. They ducking Bud. They ducking Bud, right? And now when the opportunity has presented itself for Bud to fight them PBC guys, he going he gonna to turn it down? What? Bud shouldn't be turning down nothing but his collar at this point when it comes to fights with top welterweights. He got to get some top five, top ten guys on his resume at 147. For real. I don't care if Jeff Horn had a belt, y'all. Like, y'all know Jeff Horn is not the same thing as Sean Porter. Y'all know that. You know what I mean? Y'all know Kavalaskis. Kavalaskis undefeated. I, and look, look. Bud is exceptional. He's a great fighter. I'm not trying to shit on Bud or nothing like that. He's a great fighter, right? But what I'm saying is, y'all know, like people were saying, Kavalasis was, uh, oh, he was a, he had a great amateur career. When a person gets to bragging about a person's amateur career, I know they ain't really like that for real on, on a professional level, right? That, I know that. If they get to talk about what he did in the amateurs, no. What have you done professionally in all, in all them fights that he's had? He ain't fought nobody and had like a draw with Ray Robinson or something like that. Like, you know, so... At this point, like, nah, bro. He has to fight somebody, a worthy opponent. Who he going to fight? If he don't fight Manny Pacquiao, he's not going to fight Errol Spence Jr. right now because Errol Spence Jr. is tied up in a fight with Danny Garcia. So if he doesn't fight Manny Pacquiao, Bo Mack, who he going to fight? He got to fight somebody. Bud got to fight somebody, man. So don't to downplay that, that, is, that, that, is, that looks really, really bad on Bud's part. For real, man. Like, come on, man. And PBC... PBC guys now they starting to be calling out Bud and Bo Mack turning it down and I'm like bro what what like it, it's so crazy man look because when I'm when we saying this right well, now when when we're saying hey that's not a good look for Bud to be turning down these fights it's not a good look all um not all Bud super fans telling us now we we y'all can't tell Bud what to do y'all can't tell him what to do Bud can do whatever he want he can do whatever he chooses to do right when at first. It was at first. At first, it was nobody at PBC wanted to fight Bud, and it's not fair. And uh, the entire roster at PBC is afraid of him, and PBC in its entirety is ducking Bud, and they they not giving Bud no chances. They not giving Bud no opportunities to make something happen or make something shake at 147. 
Now he got the opportunity, and you got his trainer talking about hell no, nah, he don't he don't look he ain't looking at them fights. What? Are you crazy, bro, man? For real. And I think look, I think Bud would beat them dudes, man. I think he'll beat Kale, Sean, and I think he and I think he'll be uh Keith Thurman. I really do. I think he could be Manny Pacquiao for real, all right? I think Bud is that talented. Now, when it comes to ESJ, Errol Spence Jr., I'm rolling with EJ for sure. For 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 I believe that um I think that uh but I think that um Errol Spence Jr. I think is a different type of guy. I think he's more skilled than a lot of people give him credit for, right? He's a big, big dude. And he can get into them trenches and fight with Bud. I know if Bud get hit. Bud going to try to turn that fight into a dog fight. And if you want to make it a dog fight with Errol Spence Jr., I don't I don't think Bud can withstand them punches like that. I don't know. I think Bud is tough as nails. But I think at the end of the day, I think it's going to wear on Bud if he wants to sit and trade. Bud's best bet is to try to box Errol. Man, I think Errol is a lot more skilled of a boxer than people give him credit for, right? But I'm going to roll with EJ. But I think it's a 50-50 fight between the two, right? But I'm like, come on, man. Like, at this point, Bud got to make the best decision for his career. He got to make the best decision for his career right now. Because if he don't fight Manny Pacquiao and, and he don't fight them other three dudes, he don't know who he going to fight. Bob Aaron sure don't know. Bob Aaron going to pull somebody else out of the darkness for him to fight. He got to fight some legit guys, man. That will booster his resume. And, and crazy as it sounds, people get mad at this. Uh, Errol Spence Jr. is a bigger star than Bud right now. Now, you can argue that Bud is more. I think Bud is... um. Skill for skill, I think he got more skills in the arsenal than Arrow. But I'm still going to pick Arrow in their fight. For sure, I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to pick Arrow. I'm still rolling EJ. But I'm saying, as, as great as he is as a fighter, his, his, like his, he, he is not, like people don't really know, like, but like they're supposed to know him. They not, man. And that's really what is, that's what irks me. Because Bud's supposed to be bigger than what he is. But the problem is, he got to get these fights. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm never going to question and tell a man what to do. But when he signed back with Top Rank, I'm sure look, they gave him a big sum of money, a big, 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 huge loaf of bread, several loaves of bread. So that's great for him and his family. But he had to know, too, that it was going to be hard for him to get them fights over on the PBC side, right? But now, okay, the fights are presenting itself. You got to make something shake, bud. You got to make something shake. That's not a good look. Right? Everybody kept saying, hey, yeah, them PBC guys, they scared of Bud. They scared of Bud. They scared of Bud. Like, why Bud don't want to fight him now? Why not? Like, you know what I'm saying? And I don't think Bud is scared of them. But he got to fight somebody. He can't be over there chilling in the pocket fighting another cop of Laskins. That, look, that's not going to do nothing for him in his career. Errol Smith Jr. got bigger status than Bud. Like, you know what I mean? So, if he wants to make it a fight where he, especially if he want to get a 50-50 split with that bread, he going to have to get one of them big names and make it an even type of, okay, so we can get 50-50 on this bread. He's going to have to fight one of them big name guys, man. And, see, I know what it is. A lot of y'all already, it is too. This is the thing too, man. Um, Oh, too. Let me address this. Gary Russell Jr. talking about he want to fight, but hell no. Gary is too little. He is too damn little. Stay where, Gary needs to stay where he at. Because at the end of the day, if Bud fight him and beat him, demolish him, he's not going to get no credit for beating up on that little bitty dude. So I don't, like, nah. I don't even want to see that fight happen at all. Uh, Gary needs to stay where he at. And then uh, Bud got to find him somebody to fight it within 147 for sure. But I know what it is, man. Everybody don't like, everybody loves, because this is the thing. People be like, oh, my God, we love Terrence Crawford. Man, y'all wasn't raw riding with Terrence Crawford when he was fighting Victor Postal and stuff like that. Y'all wasn't riding with him back then. For real, I ain't saying you got to be with everybody from the beginning. I ain't saying that. But y'all, a lot of y'all, it's a lot of people that love, half of Terrence Crawford's fans love him for the fighter that he is and the skills that he possessed. The other half only like him because he signed with top rank and Bob Arum, right? And they love to hate on the PBC guys. They hate everybody at PBC. They hate Errol Spence. They hate Deontay Wilder. They hate the Charlo brothers, Charlo twins. They hate Danny Garcia. They hate everybody at PBC because it's the popular thing to do to hate PBC. All oh, the PBC guys don't got no work ethic. They don't want to be great. They ain't got no drive. Well, hell, Bud needs to show he want to be great. Right? So, Bomat, stop to all that shit Bomat be talking. He be talking cash shit all the time. He need to put his mans in there with somebody that's legit. Put him in there with somebody that's legit so he can prove he can prove that he is that deal. For real. So, he can get in there and do what he got to do. 
All that other stuff Bo Matt be talking. Ain't nobody trying to hear that, bro. That shit he be talking. Ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. If he ain't fight, if he ain't fighting Manny Pacquiao and he ain't fighting Kell Brook, Keith Thurman, or Sean Porter, come on, man. What's what it what what's to all that talk then? And I know Bud is legit. But Bo Matt gotta cut that out, fam. For real? He shouldn't be turning down nothing but his collar, like I said before, man. He need them fights, man. He need them fights, man. So all that um, you know. At first, you know, we now we can't tell Bud what he needs to do with his career. Bud can do what he wanted to he wants to do, right? But then before then, now it's like that. Before then it was all the PBC guys ducking him. Now the opportunity opportunity presented itself presents itself, and we shouldn't push for Bud to fight a PBC guy. I thought y'all wanted us to push for them fights. Now we shouldn't now we should leave Bud alone and let him do what he wanna do. Now we shouldn't press on Bud. Let him do what he want to do. Let him make the make. Let him make the decisions he wants to make in his own career. Hell no, bro. Like I believe in Bud. I believe in Bud is legit. I love watching Bud fight. I was a fan of Bud before I was a fan of Errol Spence Jr. This real, real talk. I was a fan of Bud first. Bud started turning me off when he started dissing the black media that was the very same black media media that was supporting him from the beginning. When was nobody messing with Bud and they were shitting on him, they was talking down on him because people were saying that he had the potential to beat Manny Pacquiao. And everybody know when a fighter has the potential to become a threat to Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao fans get their panties in a bunch. They start trying to they start trying to talk bad on the fighter, downplay him, and talk crazy on him. And that same black media was buzz boosting up Terrence Bud Crawford all the way, encouraging him. They was paying for Buzz fights. They was going to Buzz fights. They were supporting him and talking him up all the way through. And when Buzz see them, he act like he too good to do an interview with them. He act like they ain't, oh they ain't they ain't in his, in his stratosphere. They ain't on his radar. He sent his little mans to talk to them instead of talking to them directly. Like, what the hell? But Bud will sit in front of Joe Rogan and sit in there with them and smile all day. He'll go to TMZ and sit and smile and talk to them all day. Now, the Breakfast Club is black media. But to be for you to talk to, for him to talk to black media, it got to be something extremely prominent, right? You know what I mean? It got to be the, only the prominent media. Like, bro, them dudes that be trying to interview you been rocking with you for the longest, from the jump. And he act like he, he better than them and he too good for them and all. He bigger than them. Like, bro, what? Bro, what? Come on, fam. Get that up out of here. Them the same dudes that was riding with you and supporting you when them same moms was shitting on your name. And the people that's so-called your fans now, a lot of them dudes was hating on you. And they only started riding with you when the PBC became popular to hate. So they went over there and they started um they started riding with you then and became your fan, your fan then because you signed to Bob Arum. Right? Had you been over there with Al Heyman, they'd be stunned on you the same way. Half of your fan base. Half is really true of his fans. Other half is really just PBC haters disguised. Like, that, that's it. They only PBC haters disguised. So, all that, bro, that's when I stopped riding with Bud. Like, I, I mean, I, I support Bud. I want to be a great fighter. I mean, I want him to, to be great. I think he's a great talent. But that's when I really started getting cool off Bud because... I looked at how Deontay Wilder and Errol Spence Jr. talk to the black media. They talk to them all the time. They will talk to anybody, even not just black media. They will talk to any and everybody that want to talk to them. Bud be acting like he's too big to talk to them. Bro, bro, what? Are you serious? Come on, man. Yes, you was undisputed at 140 for sure. That was a great feat. Great accomplishment. But come on, man. For real, you ain't Floyd Mayweather status to be doing that. And even Floyd coon ass. I was never Floyd. It was never cool for Floyd to do. Right? But I'm looking at Bud like, come on, man. Really? You going to try to downplay them and send your little man to talk to them instead of talking to them directly? I don't, I don't honor that. I don't think that's cool, man. Especially the same ones that was bigging him up and, and supporting him the whole way. Like, come on, fam. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think that's cool at all. But, you know, it, it, but Bud fans have always been saying, oh, PBC guys ducking and smoking. Our guy, he undisputed and all of that. And I'm telling you, if you ask them dudes, who Bud fought at 140 to be undisputed, they will not be able to name who he fought. All they can tell you is he undisputed. They will not be able to name the guys he fought to, to become undisputed at 140. I guarantee you that. Even though I look, and, and, and I'm a fan of Bud, right? I know who he fought, right? Because I was a fan, I was a fan of his before Errol Spence Jr. I stopped when he started dissing the black media, acting like he's too big for them. I'm like, now I'm still a fan of him. I still love watching him fight. Don't get me wrong. I still love watching him fight. I just, I started pulling back from him when he started doing that. I'm like, ah, I don't like that, bro. I don't think that's solid at all, right? Other than that, I think he's a great family man. He's great. He stayed with the same woman he's been with for years. He ain't dipped out on her when he got the bread, which is honorable, right? 
I just want him, I want him to treat the black media better. The same ones that were supporting him, right? But at the end of the day, Bo Mac, he got to fight one of them top dudes. He got to fight somebody. All that, you know, acting like you too good to fight this one and that one and all that. Ain't no time for that. This is a pivotal point in his career. He's only getting older. He got to fight one of them top guys to prove that he is legit at 147 and having to have somebody to compare it to when it comes to have some comparable uh, opponents. Uh, he, he has to have some similar opponents, at least to Errol Spence, to compare their performances, man. Bo Mac, get him in there with the real killers, man. Cut that out. Machiavelli Mills TV.